I'm going to use my lathe to make a kind of a hybrid pulley for an alternator. So this is one type of pulley that has multiple ribs, or the belt has multiple ribs in it. Um, that's steel, and this one is also steel, and this one is made just for a V-belt. But of course the hole diameter isn't the same. Um, this one is too large, and in fact the way that it is for this alternator, it needs a little step, which, you know, I'd have to add material and machine it if I was going to adapt this pulley. So what I'm going to do is I've got a block of aluminum, 3 inch diameter aluminum, and I'm going to machine a new pulley that has the grooves of this one, yet has the whole diameter in this little shoulder of, of this pulley. So that's, that's today's project. So this is a, a lathe, an engine lathe. This is called the, the headstock. Oh, well, actually, the headstock is right here. This is the chuck. The chuck connects to the headstock. This is a three-jaw chuck. Other common chucks that are used on lathes are what's called a collet chuck. A collet chuck has a piece like this that goes inside, and it's good for holding um, smaller parts are parts where you don't have a lot of area to grab it because it has a lot of contact area in the circle. It pulls this collet in. There's a little taper on the side and threads on the back. So when you thread it in, it pulls it back, which squeezes down the front and squeezes your workpiece on all sides. It's also good like if you're machining a threaded piece or a bolt, you can grab the threads and you're contacting enough threads you don't deform the threads. And then the other common style chuck that you'll see for lathes is called a four jaw chuck. So there's four jaws and they all move independently which gives you the opportunity to hold irregular non-round uh, pieces of stock like square pieces, rectangular pieces or you can set it up so you could hold um, a part off center like you could hold a round piece but you could have the center line of the part be offset. Uh, think about you know if you're machining a crankshaft um, how the the, the main journals are on the center line of the crankshaft, but the, the connecting rod journals are offset. Also on the lathe, you've got the tail stock. The tail stock is the, the back part. I currently have on it what's called a live center. It's a little support point that spins. If I'm machining something long, a long piece of tube or a, a long bar, I can support the end of it so it doesn't whip and vibrate. I can also put a drill chuck in the tailstock here for machining holes that are machined you know, right on the, the center line or the axis of the, of the lathe. This is the carriage. The carriage is the part that moves back and forth. It's got two main dials, one to move it in the, in the long direction and one to move the, the, the top part of it in the, in the crosswise direction. And then you have your, your compound slide, which is here. I don't know if the camera can pick up, but there's actually some angle markering, markings here. I can loosen this up and I can tilt this at an angle. And that's how you cut an angle on a lathe. I currently have it set up at zero degrees, so it's running parallel to the, to the main slide. And then it has its own, its own little uh, handle for, for making that move. The tool holder is here. This happens to be a quick change tool holder. I can, I can loosen it up and then I can change change bits and holders real quickly. And what I have set in here right now is just a regular uh, left hand turning bit that's actually for aluminum and non-ferrous metals. I don't know if the video is picking it up but there's actually a carbide tip brazed onto uh, a steel a steel shank and that's that's a pretty common inexpensive type of carbide tool. Um, a big thing about lathes, how a lathe works, is a lathe keeps your tool stationary and a lathe moves your workpiece or your material uh, as opposed to a milling machine um, holds your workpiece stable and uses it makes the tool spin to cut. So this is the block of aluminum that we're going to make this pulley out of and we're going to put it here in the in the chuck, in the three jaw chuck. So just like a drill chuck when I tighten up um, from the, the lugs here all three jaws move together so the piece is always held on the center line. However, for what I need to machine, I need to hold this pretty close to the edge, which is going to cause a high probability of getting it in crooked. So there's a little trick I 
I use for this. I use a set of machinist's parallels and I will set them against the, the chuck here. So one parallel is resting on two of the, the jaws and then the third one I can just kind of hold up in place here while I put my, my piece of stock in and then tighten it down. So let's see if I can set the camera down and, and do this. in and I can kind of press and hold it against the parallels and then we can tighten the jaws down so it's snug. Now of course I do not want to turn this on while the parallels are in there because it will fling them out and impale them in my forehead. Now that the stock is in the chuck the first thing we're going to do is we're going to face it off. A facing cut is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. This is just a saw cut edge. So I've got my tool bit in here just a little bit at an angle so that it will clear so as it moves inward this will this will clear and I'm going to, to machine it off. Now I have this set up pretty well. We'll double check it. But you see this screw point, this uh, threaded kind of collar nut on the tool post I can use this to adjust the height of the tool because really we need the height of this tool to be lined up exactly with the center line of rotation. When I machine this cut, if there's a little stub left in the middle, that means that the tool is either too high or too low and so it doesn't reach all the way to the middle. If it's a little too low, it'll go all the way across and whatever is between the tool and the axis of rotation won't get cut. So I'll be able to adjust that and move that to make sure that the center of the part gets cut. My cut went all the way to the center of the piece, so I've got the height of the tool set correctly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start turning a strip of the outside down to the diameter. So again, we're, we're going to be making this pulley kind of in, in this direction. I try to do as many operations per setup as possible, because once you start machining, you're creating a part that is completely cylindrical around the axis of rotation. But as soon as you unchuck it or you, you take it out of the chuck and you try to remount it, there's you can get it close, but it's not going to be as concentric as it was when it started. It's always going to have some little variations or you know be a little bit different. Um, so to make the best quality part, you want to do as many operations as you can. So we're going to work on making this stub here. So there's a few things I'm going to do. I'm going to first figure out this depth from this surface to this surface and then you know figure that out here and then also this diameter and I'm going to use a caliper to figure that out but I'm also going to use the the tool bit to kind of touch it in place to to make a little score line so that we can so that I can visually see where those spots are As I start getting close to the diameter that I'm shooting for here, I'm going to use the built-in scales on the, on the adjustments here to, to get the exact measurements I want. I don't know how well you can see this, but this says inch, and in the red, it's calibrated in thousandths of an inch, and the black is metric. So I'm going to turn this so that zero lines right up with the inch mark right about there and now I'm going to take my next cut turning this on the compound rest so now if I turn the machine off I can measure this with the calipers So this is 1.478 of an inch, just under one and a half inches. And the measurement I'm looking for 
is just under 1.2, 1.1. So we'll make it about 1.1. So this is 1.47, was it? 1.478. So I have to come 0.378 of an inch smaller in diameter. So the way this is calibrated, this is in every one of these lines is two thousandths of an inch on this. So one full revolution of the dial is 0.2. So I can come in one full revolution will be 0.2 of an inch. Then I will come half a revolution, which will make it 0.3 of an inch. And then I'll be able to use the scale and come in another 78 thousandths. And then it should be right on the money. So let's try that out. All right, let's see how close we came to 1.1. 1.096, four thousandths under, that's close enough for me. Now that I have my step machined in, again, it's kind of a mirror. Looks like that, right? It's looking about right. I'm going to reduce the diameter a little bit and not quite as far down as this. Um, I want it to spin a little slower, so by making it a little larger in diameter, it won't spin quite as fast. But we'll uh, I'll machine this surface down a little bit and then we'll be ready to start cutting the grooves. So now I have a tool bit that is the right V shape to cut the grooves on for this pulley. So I'm going to figure out, so again we're making the pulley in this direction, so I'm going to figure out what the distance is from this surface to that first inside groove and then I'm going to start figuring out how to make this. And again this is where my little increment scale will come in very handy because I'll be able to dial it to the, the next increment and make a cut, next increment and make a cut. All right, have some nice grooves cut in there. And the next step will be to bore a hole in the end, the right size for the shaft. Now it's time to bore the hole in the center of my pulley. I'm gonna do that in a few steps. What I have in the drill chuck right now is called a center drill. It's kind of short and stubby, um, and it starts with a small point. So its advantage is it doesn't wander when it starts drilling. So it'll, it'll start drilling right in the very center. And then I'm going to step up two different drill sizes. So then I'll go to this one, which is, I don't know, a little more than a quarter inch. This one about three eighths, and this one which is a little bigger than half. And that will get me pretty close to the size. And then I'll, I will use a little boring bar to actually bore the hole to the exact diameter. It actually turns out I misjudged my drill bit size. So instead of taking a few thousandths of an inch off of the boring bar, it turns out my drill bit leaves it at about five thousandths over where I want, but um, I'm gonna be able to live with that. It's still gonna be close enough with intolerance to, to work just fine. So the next step we're gonna do is to separate the main part of the pulley from the rest of the material, and then uh, we'll be able to machine it from the backside. We'll be able to hold it here and machine the backside. 
So this next step uses what's called a parting tool. A parting tool is a thin little metal blade like this that I will mount and I'll feed it in and it'll, it'll separate the, the part. So here's my pulley. It's got the hole through the center. It's got a little shoulder on this side, just like the original one has. It's got the, the ribs for the grooves for the ribbed belt, just like this one has. And the only thing I left to do is now that it's parted, I'll be able to hold it in the chuck on this side, and I will be able to machine this little pocket, this little recess on this. But that, that will happen another day.